The winter of 2010-2011 was a tough one for me. New York City is home, and old man Winter kicked down the door early with a fury. He left it wide open. I watched hell freeze over. In reality, it was a long, icy, snow-filled Gotham. I saw no escape for Snake, and my drinking was at an all-time high. I felt numb and deaf to life itself. It's April, and we're still having shit for weather, was a seed for my foul mood. My patience, as thin as a young, aspiring, coke-binging, anorexic model. My body and my soul have been given the eight count. Too late for the towel, I was KO'd. Time for change. I started with putting my health at the top of my priorities, believing in my art and doing something about said belief. Sensing my despair via mental telepathy, my good friend Jason Hoy gave me a ring. He said he was planning a surf trip that summer. Before he got to the details, I was screaming, I'm in. Jason is a well-traveled human, and through the years, we've embarked on countless adventures. My trust and faith in him is strong. He mentioned Central America or Mexico for this story. Again, chomping at the bits, I barked, I'm in. A seed was planted and grew into a four-man trip to Nicaragua. Spring arrived with a summer surf trip planned. I started to regain feelings in my senses. Inspired, I decided to document this story. I pretty much slept through the travel part. I woke up sitting shotgun in a Nicaraguan taxi. We decided not to rough it on this one and get the spoil treatment. With only a one week window to work with, we were on our way. We booked our trip to the wonderful people at Safari Charters, which included guides, trucks, a boat for surfing and fishing, food, of course all the beer and Florida Kanye one could consume. The house we stayed in, which I instantly coined as headquarters, was located directly on the beach. We arrived, frothing from our headquarters view of the ocean in a solid swell. And without hesitation, we were waxing our boards and paddling out. After our first session, we were greeted by the extremely enthusiastic safari intern, Austin Bungert. He was fired up on taking us to a rodeo. With a cooler packed to the gills, mission one was in effect. The rodeo was classic. They would single out a bull, tie him up, then wait for a rider to take one of these bulls on. Confidence was low on this day, zero attempts and no takers. The locals were cool and well aware of the surf culture. This guy took an interest in Jason, or was it the uniforms I designed for the trip? Custom monogram t-shirts I made with cut-off jeans shorts. The Tonyas and the rum specials were working hand in hand with the wonderful vibe of the land. Here we are getting a groove for things with a bumpy ride home. I felt the urge for a dusk surf session. The tide was low, which made most, if not all, the waves close out on a shallow sandbar. I ate sand on every wave. Could have been the rum, or maybe the Tonyas. I'll never tell.
coming in, I decided to tell the boys my plans to document the trip. With a title in mind, I'm on vacation. Closed day one with appetizers, drinks, and dinner. Brought the crew some custom teas as well. Team Subo! Introducing Austin Bunger. Austin grew up with Jason's younger brother, so they knew each other. Each day of the trip, we had a different guide, but Austin was always tagging along. Smart kid, big future. Juggling school, surfing, and traveling like a well-seasoned circus act. His energy was always welcome. He surfed really good and was constantly lighting that fire under our ass to get back out in the lineup. I nicknamed him Coach. how tall he was on this one. Watch your head, coach, and drag your ass to NYC for a visit. I got lucky, snagged a bit of underwater footage of some dolphins that got close to our boat. Present to you, Mike Walker. What? Your full name, what's your name? I don't know if I can do this. On your birth certificate. Michael Dennis Walker. Say it loud, say it. Michael Dennis Walker. There you go. All right. You remember your, uh, your first surf? How many questions is this? Is it going to take up a lot of my time? <laughs> first surfboard. Huh. My dad made me one when we were living in Cuba. He took it upon himself to, to make his own <laughs> make me a surfboard. And this thing, dude, he made it out of fucking fiberglass and he put sand on the deck for grip. And he made like this fin, but it was like a square fin out the back. It was all charred up fiberglass pieces and shit. And he gave it to me. And it was a surfboard. He didn't want to help me buy one or anything. At that point, I got a scar on my knee right here. Still got it from my fucking. At that point, did you know how to surf? Yeah. No? Did and I know how to surf? Yeah. You knew how to surf? Yeah. What was your first wave? Where, like, where, do you remember I your first remember wave? My first, my first uh, memories of surfing was uh, we were living in Hawaii and we went to Sunset Beach and on the inside there. We were body, body surfing. I uh, taught my dad into getting a rental board and uh, paddled out, at, you know. Got out there and this wave came and just fucking pitched me. <laughs> I came up crying and my dad got all mad at me. <laughs> he had a fucking rent the board. Classic shit. But yeah, that was my first wave. That was your first wave. Was my first wave. Best wave. Like you can best 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 wave you've ridden. Oh god, I don't know. I need barrel. Any barrel? I think I, I don't know, I'm going through, I'm trying to think of one way. Oh, Mexico, the right hand double spitter on the back. I don't think I'll ever feel that. There you go, that's what I like to hear. Um, worst wipeout? Probably same place. Same place. Favorite server? Besides coach? Besides coach? Uh, uh, 
Slater. Slater? Yeah. Right on, oh, man. What do you do now? Uh, just, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah? Yeah. And we're here in Nicaragua. What's, what's, uh, you want to say anything about being here in Nicaragua? Oh, yeah, man. It's just cool. It's cool. First time. It's, it's uh, having a blast. You know, good crew. Awesome crew. Everything's going down. <laughs> yeah. What do you want out of this trip? Uh, some freedom. You feel you're getting it? Oh yeah, every day's been good. It's been good. It's been good. I got you know, it's been good. That's all I can say. Good, good stuff. Word up. Good stuff's coming in. I've known Mike Walker. We call him Walker for a long time. He's a good friend with a big heart. Unbelievable chef, a no bullshit, get stuff done kind of guy. His fine knack for improv is stuff of legend. The type of guy you want in your corner for sure. My first surf trip with him, hope it's not our last. Take care of you and yours, Mike Walker. Being on or in the water is when I feel the most free and alive. Writing music and performing live is a close second. Beaches, lakes, rivers, sea to sea. What a giving element. It's invaluable and we must protect it by all means necessary. I attached a waterproof video camera to my surfboard, giving the viewer a surfer's eye perspective. Introducing Danny Hoy. State your name. State your name as it is on your birth certificate. Daniel David Hoy. Daniel David Hoy. Okay. First surfboard. Um, made by the association out of the association surf shop in Atlantic Beach. What year was that? Oh. I don't know. That was a long, long time ago. All right. Yeah. Love it, love it. Uh, first wave that you remember standing up on? Um, it's Street, for Atlanta Beach. Beach. Scott Horfley. He and I went down the street. Right on. Um, your best wave you've ever had? Indonesia. Right on. Uh, 
favorite wave? Indonesian green bush. <laughs> favorite server? Jason Moy. Right on. And uh, this trip to Nicar Nicaragua, what were you looking to get out of it? Uh, more surf than I got. And just camaraderie with some good friends and fishing, fishing and surfing. And fishing and surfing. Do you feel that was fulfilled with this trip? Oh yeah. I didn't surf as good as I would have liked to, but I had a good trip and I uh, caught my first sailfish. Right on. Worst wipeout? I was probably more scared in Indo, but only because of the bottom, but really because of the pipe out. I've really been lucky. I haven't been held down that long. So I don't put myself in situations <laughs> where it gets that heavy, but uh, probably Indo. And um, Lance's left, I think, was the sketchiest. Right on. But I want to amend my first surf trip, my first surf wave. I'm thinking that it was with Jerry and Bill Hickson. They came in, I remember Jerry came into my room and asked me if I wanted to go surfing. And I jumped out of bed and said, yeah! And he said, quiet, you're gonna wake mom and dad. And we went outside and it was real early in the morning and Bill had gotten a board from the shop. So that was probably my first surfing. It wasn't my board, but it was probably my first surfing uh, experience. So it's Jerry's fault. I know. A view of the Pacific Sailfish Danny reeled in, catch and release. Danny Hoy, brother Jerry, and the Hoy family are an extremely talented group. Name something, and one of them has done it. Danny grew up surfing and skateboarding in an era I only got a glimpse at. The mid and late 70s were classic, and I cherish those memories I have. Uncle Danny, style to burn. If I had to give Danny a nickname, it would be the ultimate grommet or super grom. He'll never grow up. I love him for that. This is my third surf trip with him. Look forward to the next. Right on. Right on. Hot springs cure all. Austin turned us on to the volcano heated freshwater pools. Nice for those aching, been too long since they've been used muscles. At first touch, I was a bit skeptical. Hot, hot, hot. But at a gradual pace, I was floating on my back and feeling it. News on the wire, Lance, founder and owner of Safari Charters, was celebrating a birthday. With the festivities starting at headquarters, Austin cracked the whip and gave orders to pack the truck. It's time to party. When we got back to headquarters, we found it empty. And the only thing waiting for us was this very intimidating tarantula. Zoinks! No worries, party got relocated to the safari bar. Here's Lance and his beautiful wife, Christian. What gracious host, backed by the incredible crew that makes sure you create your own stories. Team Subo! Shh.
show up and blow up. <laughs> That, it was over. The day of indulgence had me a loose grip on a full cup of the safari special. I decided it was time to head back to headquarters, put out the landing gear. This plane is losing altitude with a real chance of turbulence. Safety net was called in. I woke up in a hammock. No complaints on the view. My gang was still sleeping, so I took advantage of our front yard, the ocean. I decided to get some solo time. A walk and a swim in the ocean is a sure cure for this hangover. It's important to get this time to yourself. I use it to reflect, look forward, and set goals. Always up to something I am, idle hands. Let's go for a swim. Returning to headquarters, I find someone is not so happy to be up. Jason Hoy, a.k.a. Kingfish. On oh, my passport? Yeah. yeah. Jason Michael Hoy. There you go. You might have to speak up a little bit, too. Can you speak up? We'll just start with first... First recollection of surfing. First wave, or you can say first wave. Oh, that you remember. Wow. Wow. That was a long time ago. Somewhere in Hawaii. Maybe Hali, but Chun's Reef. Or maybe Three Tables. One of those places. What's maybe the I'll first think. wave you actually remember riding? Don't recall. You don't remember that? You can't recall the first wave? First wave that I... There was no... I did this, I did that. Okay. Uh, your first surfboard you remember? I do remember that. I got it for Christmas in Hawaii. It's a six foot single fin, yellow tinted horizon bottom, and a big black glass on fin. All right. 
Yeah. Okay. Christmas. It's, uh, yeah, Christmas. Christmas, Christmas when? Christmas. Christmas. Like five or six years old, maybe? Oh, wow. <clears throat> your favorite wave. Let's say your favorite wave. Any tubing wave. Any barreling wave. Yeah. That's what you want to call it. Fair enough. And then uh, tell us me, tell us, or tell me about your best wave you've ever had. I don't, I can't really say that one. I've had a lot of best waves. There's not one that sticks out? Uh, not really. They all stick out. I remember some of my first really long tubes on the west side of Kauai. I remember my first stand-up barrel. And Right in front of my friend in Mexico. That was pretty cool. You know, there's I have a there's a bunch of them. I try and get one of those every trip I go on. I had a great one in front of my dad in Costa Rica. Bloody filth, my. Bloody filth. Yeah. <clears throat> right on. How about um, <clears throat> worst wipeout? Hmm. Huh? Same Mexico. Last time I was down there. What happened? I mean, after I made it out on my third attempt, I was waiting for a wave pretty far out. And I just got cleaned up by one rogue. Missed a wave, it's like had a mine to search me out, destroy me. Totally annihilated me. Hadn't even caught a wave or anything. Popped up after 14,000 car wheels to a broken board. Actually, it's just a board that looked like a Concord, kind of broken backwards. So I actually stayed out, didn't wash me all the way in. It was the only way I paddled back out and ended up catching a wave straight off, eight off the broken board going in. So I guess I got away. <laughs> Love it. <clears throat> All right, how about a uh, favorite surfer? Favorite surfer? You're gonna have to go with Slater. Slater. Kelly Slater. Why? Uh, why not? <laughs> well, you know, the guy's insane. It's not my only favorite surfer, but if I had to pick one, I mean, there's, I don't see a reason why I shouldn't pick him. Cool character. Uh, cool character. Have to agree. Incredible surfer. What about, uh, tell us about your um, winter in Hawaii you spent with, uh, Sean Thompson was running your house? Or running your house? Running a room? He was going out with my aunt. Going out with your aunt. Tell us about that. You know, the most thing I recognized at the time were uh, all of the surfboards. Like, I see a lot of the footage now, and I remember all those boards being up in the rafters of our, like, a, we had a carport, and they just have some two by fours across the rafters, and they would just put them up in there, stack them up. So, I, I do recall that, like, looking at those and going, ah, oh, wow, it's a cool board, and, like, you know. He had a couple of distinct ones. He had a quiver, which was the first time I'd ever really seen that, but like, you know, five or six boards all painted exactly the same. And then this big pink pipe board. Remember that thing too. But yeah. It's pretty cool. The, the coolest part was when I got older and then I was seeing him in random places and we'd get along and everyone else was a freak out. Oh my god. I just know him from a long time ago. Cool. I think that'll do it. Take one. Take one. They call him Kingfish because he's been fishing since he could hold a rod and a reel. I've known him since I was 10 years old. It's a funny story how we met, and since that moment, we have shared some very unique experiences. Surfing, traveling, writing music, and straight wilding out for over 30 years. One of the most talented spirits I know. He's been through the trenches with me, had my back the whole way. Love you like a brother. No.
Now piss off. I had to leave the audio on for this next clip. It was towards the end of an afternoon session. I caught a good wave, I was feeling good, and I wanted one more. Not realizing I caught the first of a really stacked set of waves, I turned around and paddled back out to get that one more. It felt like Willy Wonka's never ending wave machine. Will the ocean calm for a moment, giving me the opportunity to get back out? I couldn't turn around towards the beach and go in. I knew the boys were watching, drinking rum, talking smack, because that's what we do. Here are the last few waves of said paddle out. Kingfish, being the genius he is, captured it all for your viewing pleasure. Enjoy. <laughs> Go, Town Love. He's he's out. Nice. Uh -huh. There you go. As it is on my passport, my name Antoine Gerard Pratt. Um, my. First wave was pretty classic. I had two summers under me. Age seven, I spent the summer on the beach at a close friend of the family's house. And my mom would give me a raft at the beginning of the summer and I would ride the raft. I'd catch white water and then try to stand up on it and hold the little ropes. And that was my first introduction to surfing and I would spend every day on the beach riding that raft and body surfing amongst other shenanigans. Then the th when I was eight, went back to the same house for the whole summer, spent every day there. And this time there was a surfboard left at the house. So I attempted at that, but I was only, I was still just riding white water, but standing up on it. Standing up on the board in the white water. And then, uh, and then, the guy next door, Brian McClellan, he 
was a good server. He was older than me. He was like, I think three years older than me, two or three years older than me. And he was a really good server. And he was gone most of the summer and he came back towards the end of the summer. And he's like, I'm going surfing. I was like, let me come. But that board that I had been riding wasn't around anymore. So I was just went, I just went with him and I was just body surfing and swimming and he was surfing. And I told him that I could surf. I was like, I know how to surf now. And he was didn't believe me, and he kept catching waves and paddling. I was just like, I was like, I want to, I want to let me ride your board. And he was like, No, no, no. And finally, I just warmed down. I was like, Come on, let me just one wave, one wave. And again, I'd only caught in white water. You know, I'd only been pushed in by the white water. Stood up on that. I hadn't caught up a, a wave and gone down the line and stood up on on that. So. <clears throat> I didn't really know what I was doing, but he did let me borrow the board, and I got up on the and I, you know, I paddled out, and and caught a wave, and stood up, and went left, and rode the wave, and I remember he probably saw the look on my face. It was the first time I did the whole deal where I caught a wave before it broke, rode the wave, and I was just like, oh, that's what it feels like. Because when you catch a wave for the first time and you feel it pick you up and you ride it and you're not just being pushed by white water and you feel that, there's nothing like that and then it just starts from there when you're a server. So that was my first wave and he took the board right back and he's like, oh cool, whatever, you know. But I was blown away, I was like, oh my god, I just did it. So. so that was the summer and then the following summer we didn't go back to the house and I'd maybe boogie board a little bit, you know, so that night I was like spent a little bit of time with that summer on the beach and stuff, but hadn't been surfing or anything. Ten, same thing, but getting getting more days at the beach and and, and uh, body surfing and boogie boarding and stuff. And then I started, I was I guess I was like eleven. Joey Vogel, my friend Joey Vogel had a bunch of boards in his house. And one day after school, he's like, I'm going surfing, man. You guys want to go surfing? So a bunch of us got off the bus and I had surfed for like three years. So I thought I knew what I was doing. And we all got off the bus, got down the, got down to uh, the beach. I couldn't make it out. I tried to paddle out and couldn't make it out. And I was like, shoot, I thought I could do it. And then the next day, same thing, he was, everyone's going surfing again, and I was like, I'm going and I'm going to do it, you know, and I did it. And then from there on out, I kept surfing. <clears throat> My first surfboard is a pretty funny story. It was a 6-2 Challenger I bought from my friend Darren Teague's older brother. I think his name was Troy Teague's. Um, it was a Challenger, like 6-2, big, thick, red all red with lightning bolts going down the sides. Not the classic lightning bolt model. It was a Challenger. It had these jagged lightning yellow bolts on the side. From the top, it looked great. The bottom, somebody had taken a brick or something to, and just like, there were just chunks, like big holes in the bottom of the board. Just riddled the whole bottom of the board. But he's like, five bucks. I was just like, shoots, we, you know five bucks and a roll of duct tape and I just went at it and I duct tape all I duct tape the whole bottom of the board. And that was pretty funny. I remember putting it on my bed and standing on it with the fin off this off the edge of the bed so I wouldn't break the fin and standing on it. I had it for a couple weeks and then I met some friends that lived a little bit closer to the beach so I left the board at their house. I go to get the board and I go to the backyard and my board's not back there and I'm like, oh, you know, what's going on? So I ended up just, I was like, ah, I'm gonna go to the beach anyway. I couldn't find, I looked around the backyard and couldn't find the board, so I went to the beach. And I'm looking at the surf and stuff and then I look over and I see like a board in the shoreline laying there and it was broken half and stuff and I'm checking it out and then I look and it was my board. So someone <laughs> had just finished off my board for me. I was bummed. <laughs> so I was like, shoot, back to square one again, no board. 
And then it was like a couple weeks after that, my grandmother had come to town. And, or my, yeah, my grandmother came to town and uh, bought me a board from Bill Hickson. And I was off and running from there. Worst wipeout, Black's Beach. I was probably 19 years old, 18 or 19 years old. And it was pretty big, black beach. And this got caught by one of those rogue sets. It was more came from the south, like out. It was just crazy. I paddle thought I was gonna get it. I was I was pretty wrong about that. I got it. I got it. I got it on the head. Like I went to duck dive and the thing just nailed me. I duck dive a little too early. I started rising up. And right when I started rising up, the thing just nailed me right on my head and ripped my board out of my hands. And I was, I was the farthest guy out at that moment. And then when I finally came up, I was all the way inside. I was the furthest guy in. <laughs> uh, but I went back out and surfed for a couple hours. And felt all right about it after that. But yeah, it was nasty little why not? Um, what else do I have to do? Favorite wave. That's a tough one. What? I tell you what, I had a really good day at telescopes in the Mentali Islands. That wave to me. They they rave about macaronis and stuff like that, but I think telescopes, I really like the way that the shape of the wave <coughs> seemed to fit. I like that wave, I like that whole area right there actually. Yeah, favorite wave. But we all know there's a bunch of waves out there, so go get them. Uh, favorite surfer, favorite surfer's a tough one. But we all know Andy Irons is, anyone that knows me knows that I was, I'm a huge Andy Irons fan. Rest in peace Andy. And, uh, but really the early guys, when I, not the early, early guys, like the 50s, but when I got into it, like when I was started serving in the 70s, the late 70s, all those guys were freaking awesome. Just the style, their whole style of the 70s was just awesome. And they were ripping. So yeah, ADR is my number one, but I really dug the guys of the 70s. All of them. Bergman, Lopez, Buttons, Dan Kiloa. Just too many to name. But just Michael Ho. All those guys. So yeah. That's I think that's it. I think that does it for my interview. Booyah. So basically, the moral of this story is to go out and create your own. Grab whoever is down. It could be a one-day adventure with the family or friends or a solo back trip around the world. You are holding the pen, my friend, that will write your story. As for my story, it starts with me being first-generation American of my family. 
My mother born in France, my father from Cuba. I was born in the South Bronx, New York. When I was five, my mother left my father, grabbed my older sister and I, moved us to Atlantic Beach, Florida. I think it was the best decision she ever made. I was introduced to the ocean immediately, and the relationship began. My father passed shortly after the move, so the ocean and surfing raised me, of course with endless support from my incredible mother. Big shout out to Mike McGuire, Hickson Surf Shop, Sunrise Surf Shop, Jim Dunlop of Mystic Surfboards, Rat Town, and all the servers I've had the pleasure of sharing stories. I'm Antoine Pratt. As far as the nickname, depends on who you're talking to. Roll the dice, open the door, step outside, find an unknown road, or look at an old one in a new way. Sheesh, was that a moon? Don't forget to enjoy the trip as well as the destination. Here we are, in uniform, last session of our trip. Well played, gentlemen. Thanks for letting me stick my nose and camera all up in your business. Until next time, brothers. Returning home, I reflect on my trip. Hey man, I've surfed down there. Gear up for another winter in New York City. Hasta luego, mi amigos.